You're watching WRKM Channel 22, number one in the region. Good evening. I'm Rafael Martinez, and this will end in darkness. Back from the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, had a case of the RSV, I think. I didn't test positive for COVID, so it wasn't that. And we didn't test positive for the flu, so it wasn't that. So we assume it's the RSVs. The third thing that's been traveling around um, this, this winter. Be careful. Take care of yourselves. We've been out an extra week, you know, and I don't like to miss weeks of this show i don't but a good it's a good thing we did though it's a good thing we did because sorry i had a there was a burp coming it opted not to do it but it's a good thing we did wait a week because you know we're here to provide the analysis for a situation we've been covering for quite some time and we've become a bit of experts in as we speak, Brittany Griner is on a plane back to America. Because America has made the trade. The most lopsided trade in statescraft has been made. Let us take you back a bit to, so you know what our, what our stance is on this. Stance number one, this is a lopsided trade. This arms dealer we're trading in to get Brittany back is called the Merchant of Death. He can lead up to about 500,000 deaths with his work alone. This was a guy who was selling AK-47s to kill DEA agents. So he's good at his job. The average WNBA game has a viewing audience of 250,000 people. And now you would say, is that per game? That must mean that there's a lot of fans. No, those are the same fans jumping from game to game. No growth. So clearly it's a lopsided trade. But I did say that if America wanted to prove it cared about black women, making this trade and showing them their trade value was a huge, which a huge, huge deal. Huge deal. We now know one black woman's worth 500,000 deaths. We now have a, a tally to go on, a standard. We'll call it the, the, the arms dealer standard. You know, now we know what the standard is when it comes to black women prisoners. 500,000 deaths, one arms dealer. Putin really wanted this guy back. I don't mean to belabor the point, but he really, really wanted this guy back. Now, that was our original stance. That this is a lopsided trade, but you might have to make it for the good of social justice. Now, the Russians took it up a notch. They put her in a prison colony. And we were not happy about that because typically in island prison colonies, kung fu tournaments. And we were not sure if Brittany Griner knew kung fu. So we started Operation Get Griner, where several black actors, Denzel Washington, Will Smith... Anthony Mackie, Michael J. White, Carl Weathers, Viola Davis, Sam Jackson would come together like a Tropic Thunder situation and save her. That was our option if we couldn't do the trade. 
Our other option in that situation was she Shawshank Redemption's her way out in the hopes of a good Netflix documentary. That was, those were the options we were going with, you know. I'm not saying they were great options, but they were options nonetheless. But America said no to those, even though they're far more spectacular and far more interesting than just a generic trade of prisoners. But we did it. We got Brittany Griner back. We laid it out. And we said, if you care about black women, you will make this deal. And he did. So, in the end, I, I, I think we're owed some money. Or at least some credit. So, Brittany, you're welcome. But send us a piece of that Netflix cash. Because daddy needs it. You're about to get a whole bunch of offers. You're not going to miss out. Send me the dollar dollar bills. Is it wrong? Should we not be claiming credit? I think we were part of negotiations. I think our video got to enough people where they went, ooh, this is a hell of a deal. And it does make sense politi pol politically. You know? Listen, we're not just podcasters here. Or, you know, we're not putting on a show. We're making deals, okay? We're getting people back from foreign countries by laying out the options. We told them, Operation Get Griner. He didn't want to risk full-scale war with our Tropic Thunder idea. So he knew better. He made the deal. And now, he got our back. That's a win, I think. A win for us. Because we get more content. And people now know that we are the reason Brittany Griner is back in America. You're welcome. We did that. And I'm... I'm just so proud of us as a country. Because we really... We've really come to a place... Where we said, hey, some social issues mean more than life. And you know, we're willing to make the sacrifice. Joe Biden today showed he truly is an ally. And we should reelect them in 2024. Now don't ask those people who will be eventually killed by the merchant of death. But I think 2024 is in the bag. So now, some of you don't want to hear this, you're going to have to start watching the WNBA. You're going to have to. We made this trade. It's your American duty to watch the WNBA now. Because we cannot let Russia think we don't care now. We made a really big deal about this. If the ratings don't go up, Russia wins. They do. The Russians will win the statescraft war if we don't raise the ratings on the WNBA. Do you want the Russians to win? I don't. I want us to win this negotiation or this argument because we made a really bad trade. And when you make questionable life decisions... You got to defend those. You got to stand by them. Good, bad, and different. Now, some are saying, isn't it great she's going home? That's nice. Nice for her. Not nice for the hundreds of thousands who will die because of the merchant of death. They're probably not um, celebrating at the moment. They probably don't even know they will be on the receiving end of the merchant of death. No one knows when the trigger will be pulled. But we, as a country, have made a decision. And we need to watch the WNBA. I mean, full season, baby. Game one to the finals. We all have to watch. We have to rally around the WNBA at this point in time. Because if we don't, the Russians win. 
Never mind that Brittany Kleiner knew things were illegal. And decided to go anyway with the hash. That hey, that she's, she's an American celebrity. She should be allowed to do what she pleases. I bet you if it was Ben Affleck, we'd be getting him back. And I think we should. Ben Affleck's a fantastic actor. Ben Affleck's only flaw that he's, he's with J-Lo. That's his only flaw. No offense to Ben. I love Ben, but you could have done better. You could have done better. But if you're not going to watch the WNBA, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. And I don't want to hear shit. I want to see all those people who were begging for her to come back to now watch the WNBA. There was another basketball player. I'm going to pull her name up. I think her name was Kelly Plume. Kelsey Plum. That was close. Kelsey Plum was saying, hey, we don't want to be paid the same amount as men. We want the same deals they have. So she finally made sense of it. No one else was speaking about it in those terms. Everyone was talking about the numbers figures, but she was like, no. She was like, what you guys aren't getting is we don't get royalties on our jerseys. We don't get pieces of the TV deal that gets signed for WNBA games the way NBA players do. So, you know, cut them in on that. Kelsey Plume made a lot of sense recently in that interview she did. Look it up. I won't be looking it up for you. I gave you her name. Google's right there. Lovely lady who made a lot of sense. And now I understand the gripes of the WNBA a bit more. It's not about the number figure. It's about the equality in deals signed. They should get a piece of their jersey sales. Hell yeah. If I'm wearing a, a Kelsey Plum jersey... And she's not getting a piece of that. There's something wrong there. If I'm watching a WNBA game and the girls aren't getting a piece of that TV right, there's something wrong there. Now that we know that one WNBA player is worth 500,000 deaths, we now have a league of, holy shit, hold on. Let's do the numbers here. Number of players in WNBA. 144 players. Let's pull out the calculator. Let's pull out the calc you later. Because I clearly did not pass math in high school. And I am not ashamed of that. A lot of kids didn't pass that class. I had a terrible math teacher. So I'll take a suck of dick. He didn't help me with anything. All right, 144 players times. 500,000 deaths. Just making sure I had the zeros right. Don't make fun of me. We're talking about 72 million deaths. These women are now worth 72 million deaths. If we are not watching the WNBA after today, all season long, and you know what? You're going to have to watch some off-season stuff. Sorry. You're, you're going to have to watch some off-season sports analysis about it. If Stephen A. Smith is not today talking nothing WNBA for the next 24 hours, we don't care enough. And that's a problem. And the Russians win. The Russians win if we are not talking about it. If Netflix is not driving in Brittany Griner's home right now, with a bricks truck of money for the documentary on this, then we don't care enough. We need to get this content off. I want WNBA TikToks. I want WWA, WNBA, oh, WNBA, this is, this, is basketball, this is a wrestling league or a basketball league. I want WNBA Instagram reels. I want people buying their favorite WNBA jerseys. I want you to know who's the WNBA team in your city. New York Liberty, let's go. I don't know who's on that team, but I know there's players on that team. 
Who is on the New York Liberty? Holy shit. There's probably some really good players on there. And I'm ashamed for not knowing. Like, I'm a New Yorker. I should know who's on that team. I should be repping hard. I'm on the Wikipedia looking for the, the current, current roster. All right. Rebecca Allen, bro. Crystal Dangerfield. That name is fire. I'm instantly already following her. Stephanie Dolson. Natasha Howard. Sabrina Iansiku from Oregon. Yeah. Mar- <laughs> Maureen Johannes. That's a, that's a good little thing over to E. Ben... Benija Laney. I think I said that name right. I'm actually kind of impressed. Michaela Onawari. Dee Dee Richards. Well, I like that. Dee Dee Richards. What else? I like that. It's a cool name. Sammy Wickham. Jocelyn Wallaby. Willoughby. Whoa, Wallaby. Willoughby. I just had a Wu-Tang fucking flashback. And Han Zhu. The New York Liberty are taking it this year. I have no evidence of that. But I now follow the WNBA. Let's go, New York Liberty. I will have a New York Liberty jersey at some point on this show. I don't know when, because jersey money is kind of expensive. But I will be rocking New York Liberty gear. Because unlike you people, I give a shit. I will be watching the WNBA because I do not want the Russians to win. That is how I'm doing it. Some of you might be going, Ralph, are you being sarcastic right now? Maybe. I guess you'll just have to watch the podcast to find out. I don't answer questions directly. Who are you, my mother? You're not. My wife? You're not. You are a listener to a podcast. Please don't go anywhere. I will answer questions, but just not this one directly. Putin fleeced us. And you know what? Putin was down bad. He was losing Ukraine. He just finally admitted this is going to take a lot longer than I thought. At some kind of um, conference. They asked him about the Ukraine. He said this is going to take a lot longer than I thought. Well, well, buddy, we all could have told you that. But he's admitting it. But he got a good deal. The merchant of death is back to business, baby. All AK-47s half off. Do you want, do you want some M16s, bruh? 25% off. He's probably selling nukes as we speak. He's got the ICBM hookup. Merchant of death, baby. Hashtag 2024. All things die. Hashtag 2024. But he's back in business. And the world goes back to the way it should be. Basketball, the playground game is upheld as more important than human life. We're back in business, baby. America's back. Who's saying it's not? He will keep talking about make America great again. We are great. We just made the most lopsided deal in the history of statescraft. No good will come from this deal. None. Because I'm telling you now, the documentary she gets is probably not going to be that interesting. It's going to be like the first 45 minutes are going to be boring. You're going to be there for the last hour. You're going to have to skip to the last hour because there's nothing interesting about her. I've done the research. She's not that interesting. She can't really hold. She can't really cut a promo, you know, as we say in the business of pro wrestling. But hey, this, this, is, this is an important time in America. We have finally put... That's right, I'm moving my mixer in the middle of the potty. That's what I do. That's how I roll. I move it and check the sound in my ears. Because I want to make sure you guys can see the technology that goes into this show. But America is back. America is back. We're back to basics. We don't care about lives that are lost in other countries, as long as they're not our own. Which, you know, that's fair, I guess. That's fair. But the content 
better be good coming out of this because we're going to need the content to be fire. We're going to need it. We need TikTok dances. We need like celebrational dances. People are dropping on the TikToks, you know, hashtag grinder, you know, grinder grind, you know, maybe that's going to be a dance. We need some Instagram reels. We need to let Russia know we're hype about this because the more we don't talk about it, the more the Russians win. Because they'll go, they didn't really care. You fleece them for something they didn't really care about. We cannot be made to look stupid here. We can't. We can't. We cannot. So you should all, even if you don't even like Brittany Griner, you should be celebrating this. Now, many people let us know on our last time we spoke about Operation Get Griner. We put that clip up on the YouTube and quite a few people felt away. Um, I'm convinced a lot of them had not even watched the video, but let us go back now and look at some of those comments, because I think those comments might let people know how we feel about it in this country. Look on the bright side. Let's take a look. Sort by, let's sort by newest. There was a lot of, there was a lot of arguments on this thread. Which I really respected. John Hubert said, Why don't you see if Black Lives Matter can help her or Antifa, the people she sponsored and worshipped here in America? And we might have reached out to them about Operation Get Griner, but did they respond back? No. They were doing other things. D Man put screw her. Then Ramirez, the alpha male 67. That's when you break. That's when you break Russian laws. That's what when. Oh, wow. See, I had a seizure reading that. That what when you break Russian laws. These are the consequences. They don't give a crap about American justice. Everybody's treated the same over there. You have no privileges, no matter who you are. Well, sir, that's a problem because celebrities are better than normal people, so they should have privileges. Brandon Kelly put, yeah, this woman will love America once she gets out of that prison. This is a big wake-up call to someone that said America's such a horrible place. It's kind of ironic, a good life lesson. So you kind of see where everyone, at least on this comment thread, feels. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I, I care mainly Mainly because I, do, I just don't want to lose to Russia. And I feel like in this deal we might have. But if we can just win the content game. It will turn it all around. I'll feel a lot better. If the content is good. Because whether you like it or not. The content game is getting kind of nasty out there. It's getting a little nasty. People are becoming a little desperate. For content. Or to be the stars of content. Meghan and Harry are back with a new six-part documentary all about how they want privacy. And in six episode, episodes, they will explain to you that they want privacy. And they could have just gotten privacy, but they wanted to let you know they want privacy in six episodes. Because things had to be said first. Pierce Morgan's already called them out for a little bit of misleading in the trailer. Some of the pictures they're using as Evidence of people overstepping their boundaries, paparazzi, or actually approved photos and approved, you know, photographers for the royal family. So they're already lying a little bit. Good for them. You know, they're really embracing the American idiom, these two royals. Because Meghan Markle is a royal now. You know, like it or not, she's royal. And we respect that, you know, to a degree. You know, I, I'm someone who... I, I kind of like what Harry did. You know, he said fuck off to his family. I want to say fuck off to my family all the time. Not my immediate family. Just aspects of my family. And he got to do that. And now he's going to do it in a six-part documentary. Um, about how they really want privacy to be left alone. And all the struggles they've been going through. Because what good is suffering through anything unless you can make content out of it? That's what Brittany Griner is going to have to learn. That's what Meghan and Harry learned. Meghan Markle's got a podcast that no one listens to. 
but she's out there making content. It's kind of sad, almost, that you can be a royal and have like real influence in real matters, but you still gotta make content though, because what's the point of doing anything unless people know about it and people see you doing it and can get enjoyment out of it and can put you know, together gifts and memes about what you're doing. But they're back, baby. They just want you to know that, hey, it was rough. That other, those other people in the royal family were racist. And there was no way they could have known, you know, not through the years of inbreeding between solely, only white families. No, Meghan Markle did not know that. She did not see the racism coming. And here it is. But I do like how they're becoming Kardashians now, you know. The thing is, if you're going to be a new Kardashians, you can't do it while not being messy. If you want to be the American royal family, you have to be messy. Those are the rules. From the days of Dynasty, Dallas, to Succession, we only like messy families. That's the way it's always been. And Meghan and Harry are going to try to be the goody-goodies. And that's going to get boring really quickly. We don't like our... We don't like our our fables to have good people. Ever since Breaking Bad came onto the scene, we kind of realized what America really was, and that was a place of criminals. Everyone trying to get theirs, everyone hoping to scheme the system. And Meghan and Harry are doing their thing. They took what was a pretty easy marriage. I don't think a whole lot was going on behind the scenes, to be honest with you. And I feel like that's going to be the rub on a six-part documentary. That we're going to find out things weren't that bad. And we're going to find out that, yeah, they're just going to flip their quote-unquote inconvenience into some American money for an American royalty situation. But they're going to be boring. I'm telling you now, they're going to be boring. You're not going to want to keep up with them. No one's going to want... She was on Suits. Nothing interesting happened on Suits, so I doubt anything behind the scenes on Suits is particularly interesting. All Harry has is that his mom's death might have been an inside job. That's it. There's not much interesting else going on there. His brother's got all the interesting stuff. He's aging at a rapid rate. Insane, in fact. I've never seen a man go bald so quickly. That's them British jeans. But Harry's not interesting. I've, I've seen Harry speak. I'm bored. I'm bored even talking about them having a six-part doc. I have to bring up the inside job with the mom in order to keep them relevant. The crown is only interesting because of the messiness. It's not because of how dignified everything is. This is the problem I always have with Downton Abbey. Like, people always thought, oh, Downton Abbey, that's a show we can all get into. Mm. Losers. All of them were just losers. They weren't interesting. They weren't really doing much. This idea that somehow, oh, we too can be fancy. We too can, you know, drink things with our pinky up. Those people are boring. Unless there's like multiple baby fathers, you know, people showing some nip. Things are not interesting to Americans. That's why Downton Abbey never really caught on in America like that. It had its crew, but it was more of an international sensation. Downton. Fucking losers. Like Meghan and Harry are losers. Because they have no other talent. She couldn't act. He couldn't do anything. This guy is getting jobs solely based on his name. Is that not nepotism? Is that the things we always talk about in a society? Is that not privilege? Apparently privilege only counts when it's people you don't like. Which if I had known that a long time ago, I'd expect less from society. And the conversations we have about money and access and all these other things if it was only just well if we like you the privilege is okay then by all means i would have i would have signed on for that i like that level of hypocrisy it can be fun we live in a hypocritical world i am a hypocrite 
and I embrace it. I'm not going to, I am going to watch the six part doc when I talk. I am going to watch it because you're going to want to hear my thoughts on it. So I'm going to watch it. And I'm going to tell you now, it's not going to be good. We were, we were so offended when they asked, what, how dark do you think the baby will be? As if no one's ever heard that in black families before. I've heard that because I've been around black families before and boy, do they ask it. Um, so do Latino families. Uh, everyone's asking it. Everyone's always wondering, oh, with these two mixed people or these two people mixing, what would the kid look like? Everyone always asks that question. I'm sorry. Like, why are we acting as if no one asks that question ever? And when they do, it's in bad taste. Everyone asks because deep down, everybody wants to know. We keep pretending we're better than what we are, but I promise you, we're not. We are not. Are you going to watch it, Bobby? Well, I bet you are. Bobby's into the royal thing. I didn't know that about Bobby. But he's really into it. He knows all the history and stuff. He won't jump on the program to share any of this stuff, mind you. Well, I, I have to. The new WRKM Wi-Fi login. I now have to do this while on air. Because I just sent it. Thanks, guys. Are you, so you're going to watch it? Okay. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. I will be watching it, too. I will be texting you my thoughts. You will be harassed by me for hours. All six of them. But you're going to have to bring the family with you. I'm sorry. Learn from the Kardashians. After a while, drama dries up. And you need new drama. Who knows? Maybe maybe Megan has a sister that might get involved. And she might date an NBA player that repeatedly cheats on her. I don't know. You got to keep it spicy. Maybe Harry will have an affair, you know? Or maybe Harry has a secret kid out there that'll pop out. I'm telling you, you got to start thinking about these seasons like ahead of time. You got to have at least a five-season plan. I'm going to tell you now, miniseries, that's cute. But what works in America is ongoing seasons. See, that's the thing about um, British television as opposed to American television. British television, they have like a short run. They have like a little, you know, one to three seasons. And they're in and out and they care about the dignity of their story. Good for them. But in America, we want to drain every last bit of them. And if Harry and Meghan want to be American royalty, they're going to have to let us into some stuff. They're going to have to talk about how they have sex. You're going to have to tell us at some point. You're going to have to make some lewd comments, some crude comments. A sex tape might have to drop. This is the content game, baby. All right? This is the content game. This is what you wanted, Megan. You wanted to be a celebrity. You wanted to be a real one as opposed to being just a girl in suits. This is what it cost. But if I'm Harry, I started leaning into that Princess Diana shit. You know, I start leaning into that conspiracy ASAP because without it, he's nothing. He doesn't have anything else to offer. He, he's not Barack Obama. Barack Obama has playlists. He, he's got mad shit. Like, I want to sit down and talk to Barack. Even though that Bruce Springsteen, Barack Obama podcast was kind of lame, but I still like hearing Barack talk. He's interesting. He's captivating. Harry isn't. Harry has a book coming out. Called spare. Because after all. He is a spare tire. He adds nothing to the royal family. Other than being born. He's just an extra son. In case the other one doesn't do what he's supposed to do. It is what it is. Know your place in life. He should have known his place. And he should have been happy about it. No one expects him to do things. Sure he got to go to a couple of royal engagements. Show up a few places. Shake a few hands. Kiss a baby here and there. Who cares? It's a good life. And yes, is your family made up of weird white inbreds? Of course. And do they have old school backwards concerns? Yes. No one's saying that's good. But I am saying you suck it up for the money. That's what I would do. 
and suck it up for the money. Because what, what do you want to be? Now you got to be a TikToker. Now, LA is run by TikTokers. What, are they going to start a TikTok now? Megan and Harry doing dumbass dances, doing couples challenges. That's their future. Has nothing to do with dignity and pride. No, no, no. Congrats. You're just like everyone else. You got the bag. Now you two will be just interested for interesting to be living that's it and i'm happy for them truly am because it shows how utterly full of shit we are that we'll accept a new kardashian if we can get one just because they seem to be a bit more i guess i don't know what's the word i'm looking for classy let me tell you something my friends class class can be faked class can be faked You can learn that shit. I've seen many learn it. You can fake it till you make it. And these kids, well, they're going to fake it till they make it. We have needed a replacement for the Kardashians for a long time. You know, if you don't build new stars, territories tend to die. We learned that in pro wrestling. You have to continuously build new stars. And Meghan and Harry need to be new stars. We are witnessing the end. The Kardashian empire, kind of like it's, it's no one cares anymore. You know, I, I've seen I've heard people talk about, you know, they were at places where the Kardashians are filming their show and no one cared. No one took out their camera to record or take pictures. No one gave a damn. The Kardashians were there. This is the end of the era. They've done all they can do. They've run out of content to produce. Kanye's trying his best. To keep that content game alive for them. He's he's in love with Hitler now. You know? And I, listen, I could have told you that. Once he started getting eh, about the Jews, I could have told you it ends with Hitler. It was always going to end with Hitler. That's how it starts with anti-Semitism. It starts with a little, anti-se- a little anti-Semitism. And it goes right into Hitler. You can't avoid it. But, you know, he's generating content, I guess, for a presidential campaign. And the more they cancel him, the, the more down the ladder he goes. He went from drink champs to Alex Jones. Then he went from there to Gavin McGinnis. And Gavin McGinnis is kind of lowest you can get at this point. People thought it was Alex Jones, but no. Gavin, he's on Compound Media. I don't know if it's a Compound Media, but who watches Compound Media? Not a lot of people from what I hear. And I used to be a huge Anthony Cumia fan, you know, the Opie and Anthony days, but it's kind of over. But now he's at his last rope talking to Gavin McGinnis. Congrats. You know? And now Kanye thinks if he wears a, a black mask and a really terrible coat, that will generate interest, but it's not. So he went with the one thing he could do. He loves Hitler. And that's a very provocative thing to do for content, don't you think? He's really trying his best to generate some kind of interest. He has no political platform, so the presidential campaign's over, as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing much he can really do. You said you love Hitler. He's got to play that all the time, and your entire campaign is over. He fired Milo Yabinabinabus, whatever his last name is. Because I guess Hitler was a thing too far for Milo. Though Milo was known as the ultimate conservative troll. He hangs out with Nick Fuentes who says it's gay to be in a heterosexual relationship. And he's a proud incel. And if you look like Nick Fuentes, there's a reason why you aren't getting laid. You look like a Keebler elf. You know, who the fuck is going to fuck anybody looks like a Keebler elf? Nobody. This is a kid who ran out of options a long, long time ago. And now he's hanging out with the biggest musical artist in the world. And they both love Hitler. Which is odd. Which is very odd. Given all we know about Hitler. I didn't think it was up for debate. Hitler, to be honest with you. I thought we all agreed. Hitler was a bad dude. Holocaust is bad. You know. The black Israelites may not believe that. Which is interesting now. To see humanity 
the rest of the world now understand what we've all understood in the black and brown community, the black Israelites. We've known of their existence and we've dealt with it. And now everyone else gets to experience them. They can be a fun time, the black Israelites. Sure, what they say is horrifyingly racist and anti-Semitic, but it can be funny sometimes. There's humor somewhere in it, in a dark sense. But now the rest of the world is dealing with it. Because the content game got nasty. You know, it's no longer enough to just be a celebrity. You know, it's no longer enough to just be, I'm an actor, I'm a musician, I'm, you know, a painter. I now have to generate content, interview content, video content. I have to go viral. And this is where we're at. What's the next move for Kanye? You know? Nazi influence? I don't know. I don't think there's a market for that. I don't know if there's TikToks for that. Maybe he can rebrand Yeezy to Nazi, you know, and then he'll make Nazi sneakers. Because he did say the Nazis had beautiful uniforms, which was. It was weird, right? Because Alex Jones during that entire interview was really trying to hone him in on, hey, Nazis are bad. Now, I'm willing to flirt with you on some of the stuff. Maybe they had cool Hugo Boss uniforms and cool Hugo Boss jackets, which, once again, weird. But Ye was like, no. He thinks Hitler was a good guy, and he doesn't believe the 600 million number for the Holocaust. Weird flex. Maybe he's going into a new, a new dynamic, a new... Demographic, if you will. Maybe he's tired of reasonable people. And he's like, I'm going to go for the nutties. Because essentially, that's all he's got left now. He's been canceled from everything else. Now he'll hang out with Gavin McGinnis. And the Proud Boys. What a way to end the legacy, you know? You start with George Bush don't care about black people. Now you don't care about black people or Jewish people, it seems. So... But this has to be a letdown because all the people who were defending him no longer defend him anymore. They're all quiet about it. Can't talk about it. This was not what he expected us to do. We didn't expect him to do this. We didn't think it was going to get this far. We were just having a little bit of fun. Yeah, he's an artist. Oh, he's crazy. He's so smart. Uh, how'd that work out for everybody? See, this is what happens when you placate people. They just take it too far. And he went too far. You can't go farther than loving Hitler. I don't think you can. Loving the devil is the same because devil worship is kind of okay now. You know? People are kind of cool with it, devil worship. They're not really thrown off by it. Like, if you look at the new Sabrina Teenage Witch show, it was all about devil worship, you know? Now Wednesday is popular on Netflix. Everyone likes the devil and shit, but Hitler... You can't go there. There's no rebrand there. This is going to be a hard one to flip. But it's content. People are generating content off it. We're generating content. We're talking about it on the show. So, you know, maybe he's got a point. Maybe the more he goes down this rabbit hole, the more, the worse it becomes. And we kind of figure out what the bottom is. I don't think anyone's ever been as canceled as Kanye is right now. No one's ever reached the true depths of kind. Con- the depths of conf- the depths of cancellation. No one's ever been there, and he will. He's like the James Cameron of cancellation. He just keeps going down, down deep, baby, because he wants to get to that sweet, sweet Titanic. Avatar Two's coming out. Gonna see it for the technology, not necessarily in it for the plot. What a weird stray to hit at James Cameron. Even though all of film Twitter is like, James Cameron, King James is back. Like, you fucking losers. You're fucking losers if you're saying King James. Like, if you're calling James Cameron King James, you don't get laid. Like, you don't. And I wouldn't let you near children. Because treating filmmakers this way is weirdo territory. Being that hype about Pandora where people have sex by putting their braids together. 
And the thing is, if you enjoy these kind of stories where there is a savior aspect to save a tribe because of the actions of the invading parties, people, you kind of, you kind of think Pocahontas is a love story and you're probably going, Oh, but that was so cute. John Smith and Pocahontas, they were, they were cool. No, she was a child. He was an adult. And if you think that's cool, you're a pedophile. And if you think Avatar is cool, are you a pedophile? Maybe. I have no evidence to back any of that up. I'm just talking shit. I'm just talking shit. The content game got nasty. It got really gross. So gross. But I think it was always going to end up here. I think when you... When... when when the ceiling of outrageousness blows up, you can only keep climbing from there. And chaos is a ladder. And Ye said, I'll climb up that ladder gladly. And I will I'll now be a black Nazi. Which, you know, bold move. Bold move. Don't think it'll pan out. Now, it's interesting watching everyone back off now. They don't defend him as much anymore because they realize, oh, he's crazy. And it's like, yeah, we've been telling you he's crazy for a long time. But no one wants to believe it. No one wants to believe it. It's a little odd that it, it took the Hitler thing. It wasn't the original anti-Semitism no, that, that people were fine with. But... Once you start saying you love Hitler, oh, it's a bit too much, don't you think? It's a bit much for people. Never mind it was blaming a race of people for your own bad business dealings. No, 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 no. It's the Hitler thing that really, really bummed people out. Speaking of downers, here's an assisted suicide commercial. Last breaths are sacred. When I imagine my final days, I see bubbles. I see the ocean. I see music. Even now, as I seek help to end my life, there is still so much beauty. You just have to be brave enough to see it. See, that was good content. That was good content. I liked it. It was well shot. Beautifully lit. Good content. It didn't make assisted suicide seem weird at all. Though it is. Just a little bit. Just a tad. You know? I've always had a... Evolving relationship with suicide, you could say. Or at least my thoughts on it. Because it's very self-indulgent, is it not? To go, I'm out. I'm done. I've had enough of this. Bye-bye. Which, badass, you know, you knew when it was over. You knew the run was over. You were tired of it. You wanted to get out. But assisted suicide now makes it someone else's problem. And it shouldn't be. If you're choosing to end your life, why make it someone else's problem? Clearly, the problem was all on you. Why bleed on somebody else? You know what I mean? Is that harsh? Shouldn't be. Why don't you just throw yourself in the ocean? Give yourself back to the fish. Let them eat you. And they will continue the circle of life. Jump off a mountain. Let the reindeer mountain lions have you give back to the land. All this need for pageantry at the end. For long notes about how cruel the world was. What are you, a Roman senator? I guess it's, you're not that important. No one is, really, in the long scheme of things. We're all little specks of dust in a galaxy that does not care for us. So why make a big deal out of it? Why make a big deal out of it? Why must you have dignity in suicide? You don't need that. You're quitting. You chose to quit. Now, that's harsh, harsh, harsh. I can admit that's harsh, but you are quitting. So now you want dignity at the end? Hey, 
I'm quitting, but can you, can you spice it up a little bit? She was having an awesome life in that commercial, as far as I can tell. She didn't mention her sickness once or anything. Jennifer had a dope-ass life doing dope-ass shit. Still did it. Maybe that, maybe that goes to something we talked about earlier. Maybe being a millionaire doesn't end misery. Maybe it creates more, more. More money, more problems, as they used to say in the hip-hop game. But, I never heard Biggie once say, make your suicide someone else's problem, so. I just imagine having to go, like, do it wrong. Like, I imagine it's a job creator, for sure. There are some people who don't want to go, so why not make a business out of it? Why not make a little bit of hard cash money? Remember when Wilder Valderrama was doing um, Yo Mama? And you're like, for that cash money? I fucking hated Wilmer Valderrama. But everyone loved them. Everyone, I never understood it. He wasn't even funny. He was even the funniest guy on his own TV show. Cash money. But hey, people don't want to be here anymore. People want to die. They're willing to pay or their insurances, which if I'm an insurance company, do I really want to cover that? The whole point is I cover something happens to you. Death, that's life insurance. Now they're into that. Does the life insurance cover it? I don't know enough about Canadian law to really break that down. But I do know this. Must you make it someone else's problem? If I decided to kill myself, if, and it's a big if, because I like me a lot. I like me a lot. And the idea of ending me sounds kind of whack. But if I was going to end me, I'd do it as privately as possible. I'd rent out a cabin somewhere, far away from civilization. I'd smoke one last joint, have one last glass of whiskey, go to the dock, Blow my brains out and let my body fall into the water so the fish and other wildlife could have their way with me. So I wouldn't be anyone else's problem. That's the way you do it. You don't want to be anymore? That's cool. Pack it up, but don't be someone else's problem. Don't make me have to clean up after you. You know? Do that shit on your own time. Figure that out. Because you, you're already leaving us with the mystery of why. Now you had the mystery of why and clean you up. That's a little selfish. That's a little selfish. I'm just saying. Tad bit. And I've had people I know commit suicide. And the first thing I thought was, well, well, that's going to be a cleanup. And I want no part of it. Love them, but I'm not cleaning them up. I just want to know why and was I a part of it? Was it my fault? No, then hmm, I hear you. Life is tough. You had to go. I got gotcha. you. You will find no qualms with me. But the cleanup. Who wants that? You know? Like, it's why I can't live alone. It's why I can't live alone. Mm -mm. If I am to perish in private normally, I want to be my wife's problem, my wife's problem only. That's it. She's got to call the people to clean me up. I don't want to be anyone else's problem, really. Those other guys, that's their job. Now, some would say, isn't this the suicide people? That's their job. Well, that's a little weird of a job to have, isn't it? If you're applying to work at the assisted suicide clinic, you're a fucking weirdo. You're a freak and you should be jailed. Because there's something off with you. Or. Maybe there's a better way of doing this. Solve our crime problem and our suicide problem. Take the people who want to die, throw them on the island and bring out our worst murderers. Our top 10 and they can hunt them. And who knows, maybe in a twist of fate, some of these suicide people want, I want to live now, and they fight back and win. 
Now we have content. If you must end your life, please provide content. Don't you think you deserve that? Shh, Jennifer got cool content in the end. This is a dope ass commercial. She's dead now. And she'll never be able to see how dope this commercial turned out to be. Maybe they showed her a cut beforehand. But she'll never see how viral it went. She'll never be able to go, wow, I really affected a bunch of people. I was part of something. Maybe I shouldn't have killed myself. See, we, you know? And that's the thing about it. You know, we don't know how our lives will be perceived after we're gone. But we do certainly have an idea of how this life and this episode is going to end. <laughs>